Hey, what is up guys and welcome to my channel and for a new Strangers of Paradise video. We are just a few hours away from getting our hands on the final DLC for the game. It's been an amazing ride and I'm kind of sad that this will be the final DLC and potentially the final update for the game overall. Hopefully the game did well and sets up a potential sequel with this final DLC story. We now have a look at the patch notes and all the changes coming along with this new DLC. I will do my best to go over everything that was shown. But bear with me, it was all in Japanese and we don't have an official English translation yet. These notes are just super hard to understand but I will do my best to go over all the things that are coming with this update. So let's get right into it. The different future DLC would come with new story and submissions but in order to play it you will need to complete the previous Wanderer of the Rift DLC in order to access it. With this new update we also get another greater difficulty. We will now have to play the DLC on the Lufenia difficulty. With this we can now raise our gear levels even higher and enemies will be even more powerful than before. Also a new type of loot or special effects have been added to the gears. It is mentioned that they have added special effects with powerful illusions and final icons. They didn't show off any of this in their promotional videos so we will just have to wait and see what these will be. With the new loot comes the new weapon types and jobs. We can now play the game with guns. Probably one of the best things with the DLC are probably the guns. Guns will be available from the original main story so you don't need to have this DLC in order to play with them. With it comes 3 new jobs that have been revealed. We have the marksman which will most likely be the basic job for the guns. Able to prevent your enemies from using unblockable attacks with your dazing bullet. I can see this as being a really good secondary class in the early stages of the game. Plus Jax just grows some wings cause why not right? We then have the hunter job which is most likely going to be the advanced gun job. While the job action skill analyzed is in effect, a counter will increase each time you attack the enemy. The higher the counter, the more easily you'll be able to pierce the enemy's resistance and strike their weak points. I'm so glad the guns have a good amount of variety in their gameplay. Then finally we have the gambler job. With this you can use the job action ability roulette to spin the wheel and use any two abilities chosen at random. We don't know the extent of the spinning wheel. Do we get a set of abilities at the start of the missions? Or do we get a new wheel every time we use this ability? Here's what I would have hoped we got for this roulette. A wheel where we can switch jobs randomly. Now that would have been pretty sick if that happened. Those are all the new jobs and classes that we will get. With each job there will also be 2 subclasses with it as well. So technically we get 6 jobs to play with in this new DLC. Which is really good compared to the previous DLC which only gave us 1 job and 2 subclasses. Some new dragon trials have been added and a lot of new quality of life improvements have been added to the smithy as well as just filtering and managing your gear overall. As some of the hardcore players, we do have thousands of gear pieces and it's always good to have more and easy ways to find exactly what you may be looking for. The smithy will also get a new functionality which is replicate. With this we can duplicate gear and it's effects using the new resource which is the mannequin materials. Not only that, we can also use the same resource to upgrade special effects if we are running short on the resources needed. With how many there are showing off in the trailers, I hope we do get an easy way to farm for these new materials. Through all the trailers we do see the player using the garland armor. I am certain this will drop just like all the normal loot so we will just have to keep our eyes peeled for this particular piece of armor while we are fighting. The quality of equipment has been improved at the exchange shop and the dragon treasures required have been increased. This basically comes with each DLC, making the gear at the exchange shop just a bit more viable. Some new and really needed changes have been made to the labyrinth. We can now feed the monsters in the monster change menu. This is a really great change as before you would just have to run around and feed each monster individually which was just unnecessary. Now we can just go over to Astos and everything is in one place. Monsters also have a 6th effect to go along with them. Before they came with 3 effects and 2 job affinities that each monster boosted. Now we will have 3 effects and 3 affinities from each monster. I am sure not all of them may be affinities otherwise some monsters may have duplicate affinities. I am not certain about this but from the screenshot that was shown we can see that we get 3 special effects and 3 affinities so we will stick with that for now. Then we also get a floor increase to the dimensional labyrinth. This is most likely going to go all the way to floor 200. I would have been surprised if this didn't happen since we do get another level cap and probably job level increase so to compensate for that getting the floor increase was essential. So let's get a build ready and race once again to the top. Sure it's not going to be easy but once again something to work towards. Then in the notes they also mentioned this. Select save data in the labyrinth of the dimensions. 
Now I don't know what this means. Maybe if you lose all your dimension points, you can revert to your previous save data to go back to. I'm not sure. You know, these patch notes are just so hard to read. But now let's go over all the big changes coming to the weapons and their abilities. Overall, all the special effects have gotten an increase in stat numbers, such as the ability damage, break amount, charge damage dealt, all will get a good increase in its effects, which is good. But still, for your main builds later, getting effects like your strength and intellect is probably going to be your best option in your builds. Across all your weapon types, we get damage boost to all our front, rear, and side attacks. A lot of combo abilities have been buffed in power and break damage dealt. The sword, great swords, axe all got really good damage increases in the combo abilities. It's so funny in the notes that they translate the maces as a stick. I laughed so hard. They are not wrong though. It is just a stick. Each job action has now been modified to be treated as a combo ability. This will make it affected by special effects such as the blessing of the phantom beast, which is the summon blessing. This is probably the biggest change to come with this patch. As an example, things like the Breaker and the Swordsman, who before were treated as a job ability, will now also act as a combo ability when you add it into those slots. So Ramu, Ifrit and even Affinities that proc Perry FX, like your 600 foot Samurai, will always activate even if you use a job ability in those slots. Now this change is big. Job actions for basic jobs have been added to weapon attached abilities. Oh my god, this means especially the spinning slash from your swordsman can now be used with any greatsword. Iagiri can be used with any job with the katana. Weak spot can be used with any dagger. And of course, all knuckles can use the explosive fist. I am super excited for this change. Imagine a Dark Knight or a Paladin using a greatsword with Spinning Slash. It's gonna be amazing. Now, time to get into the important part, which is the buffs and the nerves to the jobs. Let's first of all start off with the Paladin. Still probably one of the strongest jobs. It did get a slight nerf and a buff. The Holy Fang damage dealt has been changed from a multiplication frame to an addition frame. I'm not sure how much this will affect the damage and break damage dealt, but it definitely is a nerf to the Holy Fang. For the Paladin's 250% affinity, which is the bringer of light, we can increase HP regen for it. For the Assassin, we can chain cancel faster for both Requiem and Extermination. Also the Assassin job affinity, which is final moments at 400%, will remain even if you switch battle sets. This is good as before you needed this skill on both jobs if you wanted to constantly have the skill active. The Void Knight also got a slight buff in the amount of magic and break gauge recovery for his job action skill. For the Tyrant, we get a decrease in MP consumption for its two subclasses. Also an increase in MP gain for its final 600% affinity, which is the Memories of the Tyrant. Cyclic Warrior's 400%, which is the Divine Punishment, got an increase to the period of time extended to the Lightbringer with each Soul Burst. The Flare Blade on the Summoner is now also going to be treated as a combo ability. There are so many other changes made to some of the jobs and their affinities, but it's just hard to make out with what they are saying. These were the important ones to take note of. Chaosbringer did get a slight buff, but nothing too major. We will get longer duration based on the MP consumed, which was already there before I think. And I did see a Reddit post saying we get max MP regen on Soul Burst. But I couldn't find anything like that written in the notes, so we'll have to wait and see if that's actually correct. Now for the biggest and the most amazing part of this entire update. You may think it's the guns, new loot and jobs, or even duplicating gear and the story, but no, none of that. The best part of this entire update is that the damage cap has been increased to 999,999. We can now hit 1 million damage. Dear god, I'm so looking forward to seeing builds hitting 1 million damage. 100% this was needed, as I'm sure bosses on floor 200 will be ridiculously buffed in HP. This also means that on floor 100, you can one-shot bosses if you can hit that 1 million damage. I would have still liked if there was no damage cap at all, and we were free to hit any numbers possible. But still, 1 million sounds so cool. We have come so far everyone, from 10k to 100k and now 1 million damage. I am super excited to see all these breaker job fans going to go for hitting that 1 million damage. And that is all we will be getting with this DLC. I am super excited to jump in and try all these things out. Especially wanting to see how the guns really play out. No real nerfs were made, which I am glad to see. What changes are you most excited about? Let me know! I would love to hear from you all. I will catch you all next time.